Conversations on Reference. Uh, welcome back to uh, this podcast. My name is Simon Aristeguieta. And today I have a presentation, and it is an idea of a, pre of a presentation that I did uh, a few months ago. <clears throat> I believe that uh, it, it, it is in, of the interest, on the interest of everyone to introduce uh, uh, narratives and literature from other parts, parts of the world. And it's not enough, in my opinion, to have uh, books in our library, uh, printed books or printed stories in our library. We have to promote them. <clears throat> of course, we can uh, display uh, these uh, books on a special place where uh, our visitors can see what we, uh, you know, how diverse our literature is and our collection. However, I think we could establish uh, programs where we promote uh, literature through uh, maybe presentations by guests, by uh, library uh, staff, by members of the community. And this is the beginning of a, an idea that uh, maybe it has been established uh, in other places, but I think we should establish this in uh, the libraries, uh, uh, my, in our local library, in my local library. And the idea is that uh, we have several presentations with uh, 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 community members who have a ethnic background, a cultural background, where they can talk a little bit about uh, about their own uh, narrative, okay? In my case, uh, when <clears throat> I did this uh, presentation for librarians in, uh, from the uh, PALA, the uh, Pennsylvania Library Association, and I wanted to talk about uh, Latin American culture, or and I called the presentation Literature Diversity. I'm not going to do the presentation today because that's not the object of uh, this podcast. If you want to see the presentation, I you can see the link. I, it is posted in um, uh, YouTube. But the idea is that uh, we we present uh, uh, what I did, uh, at least, and the idea that I have is that I presented uh, at first uh, in terms of language and the different language that we find in Spain such as uh, Basque, Catalan, uh, Galician, and Castilian, which is uh, what is today Spanish. And then I talk about cultural diversity in the Spaniards, Spanish uh, peninsula, in the Iberic, uh, Iberian peninsula, but also we as uh, Latin Americans. So we have in our cultural background, in our roots, we have uh, Celtic, Roman, Sephardic, Visigoth, Islam, Native American, and, and African in our uh, cultural background, in our ethnic background. And that makes for a very interesting uh, literature, okay? And very diverse. And one of the uh, uh, elements of this literature, of course, is magic realism. And magic realism is when we add magical uh, things into our into the narrative, and things that are, uh, and they look like real, like real things that can happen. I remember my when my dad many 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 years ago was uh, uh, reading uh, Garcia Marquez uh, One Hundred Years of Solitude, that uh, he, he told me said, well you know son. When I read this, these are the same stories or same, very similar stories that I heard when I was growing up. And people, uh, com it was a, a, an alternative reality that was uh, intertwined with the reality that we can we that we see e every day. So that was very interesting. And they, many uh, Latin American authors, of course, have uh, developed a narrative using. Uh, 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 our, uh, our uh, you know, their imagination, the old stories from families and so on, and that's what they call uh, magic realism, okay? 
Uh, then uh, I talk a little bit about the boom of the 50s and 60s when this literature became very prominent around the world. Then I s select a book list that we can see, we can read and see, you know, what they're recommending in terms of uh, Latin American culture. And then I went uh, country by country um, uh, recommending uh, books that I thought were very interesting and would, would be valuable for our communities to read because they would, ha I'm sure they will enjoy reading uh, those books. So I almost went to every country of Latin America and I did my own recommendations. One of the questions that came out of that lecture was, uh, or the, of that uh, talk was, should we uh, have the books in Spanish and English? And I said, well, of course we can have them in Spanish, but it is really important we, that we have them in English because we want the, uh, our community the, as a whole to enjoy uh, reading different literatures around the world because that's, that's really enrich anybody's uh, culture. The other uh, question uh, that I received was, uh, is it, uh, how, how do you think uh, translation, does, uh, is uh, translation uh, a, a relevant and a pertinent and a way of reading um, literature that was written in other languages? I said, yeah, by all means. I think if it's a good uh, translation, uh, we can get the meanings and we can get the purpose of, uh, you know, uh, these uh, great writers. And I said that uh, I was going to do, I was, uh, I was going to start reading these books that I uh, originally read in Spanish, that I was going to read them in English to see uh, what new elements uh, were present or, or, or missing in that translation. But I think it's a great idea that uh, every public library has, uh, every public library in their collection uh development in their collection management acquires uh, titles that come from different, different cultures. The point, however, and uh, that, that's something that I want to uh, emphasize, is that it's not enough to have them in our collection. It's not enough that they are in the OPEC. We need to promote them. And we need to uh, display them in a very uh, important place in the library. But also, we could have a program, maybe in the summer, maybe in the winter, uh, that uh, uh, promotes this literature by inviting members of the community who are familiar uh, with their own uh, uh, cultural background that can talk about, you know, uh, what uh, would they recommend that we read. Of course, like any other narrative around the world, in uh, Latin American uh, narrative has different genres and different audiences. You know, there are books that are uh, children's books, young adolescents, and for older adults. Uh, there are books of actions, of fantasies, science fiction. Uh, there's crime, thrillers, biographies, etc. So there is a wealth of uh, uh, of different uh, genres in and um, in, in Latin American narrative. Uh, I think one of the elements that make uh, Latin American uh, literature so rich is our uh, our uh, diversity as a people. And if we go back in time, of course, we we can go back to the Celtics. And recent, in recent times, we can talk about immigration to other places. So think about uh, these kind of programs that you can uh, do in your libraries. And let me think what you, you, you think about uh, this uh, uh, idea of having a program presenting uh, uh, cultural diversity through a different narrative. If you want to hear the complete... Uh, um, um, presentation. There is a link in the description uh, that is uh, it was posted in YouTube. The sound is not very good uh, because I was doing the, I was doing the the lecture and I was recording with the mic uh, out of the notebook that I was using. 
but but I think it's good enough uh, if you really want to hear it. Also, if you are interested in this uh, presentation, I am. Uh, you are welcome to contact me, and I can do a presentation online to your to your library if you uh, if you wish. So, so thank you for so much for listening to for listening to our podcast uh, conversations on reference. And I really hope that you enjoy uh, today's uh, presentation and I will see you next week.